Welcome back everybody. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to um, put some paint on the uh, Stug 3B uh, I've, been, uh, I've been working on. Uh, and as you can see here, I've got, uh, I've got it all primed and ready to go. Uh, and I've primed it with uh, Mr. Surfacer uh, Black uh, 1500, cut 50-50 uh, with, uh, with their leveling uh, thinner. Uh, and that's my, that's my go-to um, primer these days. Um, on the Panther, I did uh, I used a mix of their black and their mahogany um, uh, primers, uh, but because this is going to be a Panzer Gray vehicle, I decided just to keep it uh, go straight with the black, um, and uh, does a great job of uh, kind of sealing everything up, and you know it does a good job of hiding any glue marks that you might have on there, uh, and there's there are certainly some glue marks as a result of the uh, the weld beads that were added. Um, so it looks uh, looks pretty good. Also tells you what imperfections you've had. So I've gone back and made some uh, some minor repairs to things, uh, mostly on the fenders here, where I I kind of scratched them up and I kind of dug into them when I was bending them with pliers after I thinned them down. So I kind of filled those up a bit. Um, so it looks uh, looks a lot better than it did uh, prior to that. So uh, and then uh, we're going to use uh, and I think I mentioned this last time uh, we're going to use Tamiya's new range of lacquer paints. So they have their their German German gray, um, and then we're going to lighten that a little bit with their um, dark ghost gray, which has just a it's, it's kind of a light gray with a touch of blue in it uh, for their uh, for the first highlight coat, and then for the second highlight coat, which will just be the kind of the upper areas, uh, we're going to lighten it with their uh, light ghost gray. And again, these paints are the same paints that come out of their spray bombs, uh, and we're going to use their new um, leveling thinner. So this is their new lacquer thinner with uh, with retarder, which is uh, simply a, a leveler. Uh, and I've uh, done some spraying on the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, and again, the bottom of the vehicle is a great test bed to you know to try things out and whatnot, because this is all going to get covered with mud for the most part anyway. So it's a great great opportunity to to test things. And uh, it, yeah, it sprays really really nice. I'm pretty happy with it. It does um, it does stink. Um, so if you are spraying. Uh, you know, use a ventilator if you have access to one. Uh, if you don't, open a window, put a mask on. When I sprayed, uh, and even with the the, the primer, I, I used the mask. Uh, I know I don't have a I'm ashamed to say I don't have a uh, an extractor, but um, I did use a mask and I did open a window and, and sort of blew some air out because it is uh, it is it is pretty toxic. So you want to be careful with that. Um, so for today, you know, just for the sake of filming, uh, I'm not going to wear a mask, but if you are spraying with this stuff, I heavily uh, recommend you use a mask. Um, I also have the, uh, the running gear, so I've got the, sp the sprockets, the drive sprockets, I've got the idlers, uh, I've got the return rollers, and I've got the, um, the main wheels themselves. Now these, I, I sprayed these in kind of a dark brown, so I used that combination of black and the mahogany that I was talking about earlier. And the reason for that is because I don't mask off the rubber on the road wheels uh, when I'm spraying. I just, you know, I can control the, the spray enough where I can just get in the middle. And if there's a little bit of overspray, that, that's generally going to get covered up by all of the dust and pigments and whatnot that you're putting on the, on the vehicle to simulate, uh, to simulate weathering. So, um, and, and I don't think that, you know, black, black rubber for road wheels uh, looks right either. So um, for these things, I did spray these in kind of a dark brown instead. But everything else was in black. I've got some sponges here. So why do I have these sponges? Well, there's a couple of open hatches here. And to prevent overspray from going into the model, we're just going to kind of insert these in just to, just to, add, just to add a little bit of protection. Now, you've got to be careful here because there's that little monocular gun sight that's attached to the gun that, that kind of moves around. But just to prevent massive overspray from going in. Now the problem is that when you get close to these and you want to do the inner lips of the hatches, you've got to kind of pull these off and and you know uh, get very fine with the with the uh, with the spray at that point. But when we're doing the rest of the model, we'll keep them in just to avoid any overspray from going in and <clears throat> covering up that interior, basic interior that we have in there. Um, yeah, so we'll get I'll get the airbrush going. We'll get the first color. We'll, we'll spray, we're going to spray on this German gray as is as the first uh, as the first base color, and then we'll start lightening up with the uh, dark ghost gray and light ghost gray as we go through. And we'll be using the thinner, so we'll get that set up, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the airbrush ready to go. We've got the paint loaded in, so I'm using 
uh, the uh, LP27, which is the German gray from the lacquer range. Again, same same color as, as what you get the XF63 in their acrylic range. So just different different format, same or different uh, formula, same color. And then I've got about 40% paint to 60% thinner, um, maybe maybe 65% thinner to 35% uh, paint. So there's uh, measurements are are approximate here. So um, we'll start, we'll start, uh, we'll get this light on here so that everybody can see. And we'll start, we'll do a couple of test shots of the. And then we'll start, maybe start, yeah, again, you start targeting panels. I'm going to get my eyes on. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the panel and just go to the next one. So this is just the base color. So all you're trying to do with this is just get some coverage. But you want a little bit of the black to show through. I think I may add just a touch more paint to the mix. So what I do when I want to thicken it up, I'll just take a, a to me a paint stirrer. Get some paint on it and just drop it in and mix it. Just to thicken the paint up a bit. So this will probably get us more to the 60-40 ratio. All right, so we've, uh, we've thickened our paint up a bit and then we'll go back in here. There we go. I'll go to the next panel. So you see how nice this paint goes on? It's just, just beautiful. Now last night, my bench at home, I did a bit of a comparison between the Mission model paints and the Tamiya, and the uh, new Tamiya paint in terms of the, uh, the German gray and the color. And it was almost exactly the same. Maybe the Mission model paints were just a tiny bit darker. And I love, and I'm, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Mission Model paints. And I've used them. I use them on my Panther, and I use them on my Brumbar, and I use them on the AMX 13, and they're, they're fantastic. Um, and they don't stink. This, this paint, this stinks because it's got the, it's got the, uh, well, it's a lacquer based paint, and you're, and you're, you know, the, what you're thinning it with. Let's go do this panel up here. So all I'm doing here is just, just finding a panel. Nice thing about the Stug is it's a pretty boxy vehicle, so it lends itself well just to kind of picking things out. Go to the next panel. And so, so as I was saying, the, with the lacquer paints and you're thinning it with, you know, whether it's their uh, leveling thinner or whether you use the Gunsy leveling thinner, it's the same, you know, the same harsh smell. So you really have to do this in a pretty ventilated area. Really need to get a booth. 
the spray booth. Just a So you can see, I don't know if Robert, if Robert, how that's picking it up on camera, but you can, you know, obviously there's a big difference between, you know, this area here is black. We've got the, the first base color of the German gray in here. A few panels done up here. Let's, let's carry on. I'm just going to move this sponge over a bit just to... And another reason why I like to spray thin is just so that the, the coats go on very light and you can just build them up. There's a lot of control. Starting to look like a stug. Okay, so let's continue to carry on here. Again, when you're, whenever you stop spraying, don't start right on the model because let I me. Mean, you can see here, I'm getting a little bit of splatter. So I always start spraying off, and then take it onto the model. See, just building up the color. And this gives you the ability just to build it up gradually. A lot of control. And you can see it looks, it may look a little patchy. But that's okay, patchy is good. Because don't forget, you're gonna have other colors that are gonna go on top of that um, when you start lightening up. Just wanted to take this time to note that. So this is the cable that's gonna go on. So in the Tamiya kit, you get the same type of thing, but it doesn't, it looks pretty terrible actually in the Tamiya kit. So I stole this from a, a, a dragon uh, stug that I had. And you can see it just fits, it fits perfectly on there. So I didn't even have to bother filling in the holes here. Uh, and the reason why I didn't bother is that uh, you know I could have just taken some stretch sprue, sprue rather and and put it in and, and then nipped it, but then I'd have to sand off, and I didn't want to risk losing the weld detail. And because the brackets on this cable fit perfectly over it, um, you know, it covers everything up nicely. So it was a bit of a happy accident there. So we'll just we'll fix that with some uh, with some super glue when the time comes. But. Um, and I could have, I could, my, you know, as you can see here, I usually do the tools on the vehicle, but I just found for this, I didn't, uh, um, you know, just because it covers such a big area on the vehicle, I didn't want to, I didn't want to paint it in situ. So, uh, and because I, it's just a simple drop on, and you know, there's nothing destructive that you have to do to get it to fit on there and cover those holes up. Uh, I just thought it was a great opportunity to to leave it as is. So I'll leave it off the vehicle. We'll paint it separately. But just. Uh, just a footnote for you guys. Okay, let's go back to spring. Well, one thing I did off camera is before I put the um, the screens on here, I did spray some black uh into the um into the louvers here just and because they're they're fairly deep and you probably wouldn't see anything anyways and the plastic is dark gray but just to eliminate but it's it's pretty shiny plastic so i didn't 
want the risk of anybody shining a light in there and there'd be a reflection coming back. So I sprayed it with just some, uh, to me, a flat back. I actually, I used their enamel. I just sprayed that in there to cover it up and then glued the, uh, glued the, uh, the screens on. And these are the screens that come with the kit. They're pretty nice. And they have that nice woven texture to them, so. Timmy did a nice job with that. Okay, so I'd say the rear deck is probably pretty much done in terms of the base coat, so let's keep moving up the vehicle. Just picking panels at random. There's no, there's no logic to this. There's no rhyme or reason. Now I do have. You can see the the monocular scope that's attached to the gun up. So that was done in Panzer Gray. So that works out well. So that'll just get the same treatment as the rest of the vehicle does. In terms of spraying and modulating. panel here. Hmm. I have to say, I mean, it's, it's the first time I use these paints on a, well, I mean, aside from the underneath of this tank, but really kind of on the on the upper surface of the vehicle and I'm I'm pretty impressed with them. They stink. And I should be using a mask. And Robert should have a mask on too. There we go. Robert's got a sweater pulled up over his nose. Smart. But they spray really nice. Let's do this side panel here. You can see I'm just building the paint up very gradually. Very t it's more time consuming, obviously, but I think the end result is well worth it. Now, could you just prime the whole vehicle in the Panzer Gray? Mm, yeah, you could. You could. Um, but I just think, I think taking the extra step of, uh, of priming it in a dark color uh, and then working that into the overall modulation effect I think just gives it a layer of depth that you, you might not get if you just kind of start with a uniform Panzer Gray coat on it and then work at modulating over that. Because you can already see that there's there's a modulation effect going on. You can see like where the where these two panels meet. It's a little bit darker because I've I've only kind of worked on the inside. You know, tried to focus the spray pattern on the inside of the panel. Um, you know, and, and we'll continue to enhance that when we go to lighter coats. But it's uh, yeah, I just I just think it adds it gives you another layer of, of, of depth that uh, to the modulation that you're not going to get otherwise. So even though you you probably lose a lot of it um, as you as you carry forward, and especially you know when you start doing filters and washes and and you know you start doing some some oil paint rendering on it, um, uh, it just but it's just it's another layer of, of of depth, and I think it's I think it's worth well worth doing. Okay. 
Okay. Let's do, let's start doing the front of the vehicle now. So you can see I added some, um, I don't know if I talked about this last time, but I, I think since last time uh, we had this on, on camera, I've added the, uh, the headlamp wires uh, for, the, for the main lights here and, and for these uh, side lights. Um, I've also uh, added a no-tech light uh, here. So I, I, the kit one's pretty good, but I, I lost it, so I had to go. I used the PanzerArt no-tech light uh, add-on for that. Uh, I got my PanzerArt um, fire extinguisher here. So this is the same one that I used on the um, on the Panther. Um, I think this actually might be a late version, and I think they have an earlier version for early war tanks. But okay, unless you're a fire extinguisher expert, you might not know the difference. Uh, yeah, that, those are really kind of the only major ads uh, I made. Oh, actually, there's one little thing I did. So you see on the bottom of the gun. I added a little, you can see there's a little uh, latch there, and I think that what that's for, and, and this is oversized, so it's, in, in true scale, it's a lot, you know, in real life, it's it's, it's a little bit smaller than that. Uh, and I couldn't figure out what that was for, and then I realized that it's probably when they put a cap on the gun, a cover on the gun to protect it from dust and dirt and whatnot, it's probably what they use to latch it to, so that they don't lose it if it comes off by, by accident, so. But it's oversized here, but that's kind of the smallest, and I just used kind of an old, resin handle that I had lying around in the sparrows box to uh, to make that happen. If I could probably have done it with wire, but okay, maybe next time. Um, yeah, so those were really kind of like the only major adds um, to the vehicle. So the tomato's a pretty nice job out of the box as is, but um, you know, it does every, and again, looking at reference pictures, you see that there are, there are headlamp wires that, uh, that go down. So I just, I just use the, I just use lead solder to, uh, to get those in place. So. Okay, so let's get back to painting. Let's start doing... You can see when I spray when I'm very ADD, I jump all over the place. No, that's okay. Start doing the front mud guards. Start, let's start doing the gun. It's kind of the business end of the vehicle. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed the way this sprays. These paints go on with their uh, with their uh, leveling thinner. I mean, I guess you could use the Gunsy leveling thinner too. I guess that would work just as well. I just haven't gotten around to trying that yet. Actually, no, that's not true. I've tried them in the past, uh, doing not not a whole vehicle, but spraying parts here and there with uh, with their leveling thinner. It works fine. So I take that back. Now 
Now I did change the configuration of this toolbox. So in the kit, the toolbox comes kind of comes on stilts, and you put the jack block underneath. Um, I, I, I've seen reference pictures where this is kind of sitting proper on the um, on the fender, and then they have the jack block in the front here, which is where I'm going to put it. So I've got that sitting in my spares bit, and I'll do that. That's another thing I left off the vehicle to do separately. So we'll we'll paint that separately and then get that on. Start doing the tread plate area. So, so I'm kind of jumping around all over the place. So letting my ADD kick in. Now here there's an open there's an open panel, so this goes right to the inside. So I'm just I'm careful not to spray directly in. Again, not that you'd see much, but still we don't want to. So we can, now we got to get in here. So actually, um, I primed part. I like so this top part is a separate piece that that's kind of it's glued onto the vehicle now. But before I did that, I did spray the primer in here and underneath here as well before I put this on because I knew I was going to be a challenge to get to when everything was in place. So again, the nice thing about about priming in black or dark brown is that you get those natural kind of shadow areas so if you can't get to it with paint because it's kind of an enclosed area like you have here um you know at least it's it's covered in black and you know it gives a nice kind of shadow effect so you've got some at least some primer on it so i'll just kind of spray in there and see how far i can get but because it's inside you're not going to see it it's largely in the shadows um, you know, not to worry if you can't get to it. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. So let's turn it around, get this side of it. So just spraying the jack now. The nice thing about the jack is that the jack was the same color as the vehicle. Stuck. Let's turn around the other side. Start doing this. Now I'm going to move this back here. Cover the overspray. Uh, 
Now, it's important to remember that so there are some of the inside panels or inside hatches, uh, the inside side of the hatches exposed. Um, so even though the inside of the vehicle was like a white color, I think uh, an ivory color, they call it creme vice, I think is the actual name of the color. Um, any hatches that can be exposed to the outside weren't weren't white. They were painted in the in the camouflage color mm -hmm. of the vehicle. The reason for that is that if you had these white hatches, you know that would be that would expose the vehicle, um, you know, from the air or whatnot more more than it needed to be. So, so these are the same Panzer Gray. And what I might do with these is I might leave these. I might treat the inside of these different from the vehicle. So obviously they're not going to have the same amount of weathering and dust and whatnot because for the most part they'd be buttoned up. Um, especially you know when they and, and maybe you can make an argument that when they went into combat the the monocular sight would be up, but they could lower that and look through this this area here as well. So um, yeah, but I think we'll treat them a little bit differently than the rest of the vehicle just because they're they're kind of inside surfaces as it were. So I'm just trying to get in and make sure I'm getting into all the nooks and crannies. There's this panel here that I gotta do, so let's do... And you can see, once you get going, you, things happen pretty quickly. Make sure I get that rear deck, or that, not rear deck, but the, kind of the rear of the upper hull. So again, just kind of randomly hitting the vehicle just wherever I think we need to add some color. No, no real formula to what parts of the vehicle are strained. And we're just going to get color. Yeah, this stuff goes on really nice. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, this won't be the last vehicle I do with these colors, I don't think. Or these paints, rather. smooth as paint goes on. Yeah. 
So we can see the first step in the modulation with the black uh, with the black uh, primer. So I'm going to spend. I'm just going to spray the sides. So I'll do that kind of off camera. Give Robert a bit of a break, and then when we come back, we'll start doing the uh, the first highlight color. Okay. So I I just finished spraying the the side hull here and then or the side of the lower hull, um, and I didn't. I, I did I did very quickly, and I, and I wanted to sort of make a point on camera, is that because you're going to do a lot of weathering here, and there's going to be a, in this vehicle, there's going to be a lot of mud and dust and streaking and whatnot and splatter, and you know we're, we're kind of going to go to town on the weathering here. Um, you don't have to spend too much time, you know, at the same level of precision that you would be for the upper surfaces of a vehicle. So I'm just quickly, you know, just getting paint on it. And I'll flip it over to the other side. And do the same thing. So this hasn't been. So there's been. There's no Panzer ground this. So you can see I'm just very. You know, that's. I mean, it's a bigger surface area than what we did on the upper side of the vehicle. But I'm not like about the shock absorber here. I'm just. You know, I'm just hitting it. I'm not. You know, it's not a lot of precision to spray. I'm just trying to get color on it because it's all going to get muddied up anyways. So you don't have to spend a lot of, you know, you don't have to really be precise with this part of the vehicle. I'll just get the rear. These paints are pretty nice. Okay, so I haven't done this part, so let's do the rear. So I am going to paint the exhausts. The reason being is that they would have been painted the same color as the same base color as the vehicle, even though we're going to rust these up and really go to town on them. We'll just start with the base color on them. out and see what the yeah so here you want to be here's where you want to be careful so I am maybe kind of bit by bit just and then move this over there we go and then let's see what this looks like so this is a little bit harder because you got that sight in the way, but just just get a piece of sponge in there, just to protect. Again, oops, just to protect. There there, I think we're done with the base color. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll start, um, actually I still got a little bit of the gray in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding, um, I'll probably cut it 50-50 with this um, dark ghost gray. So we'll do that 
off camera. Again, the same type of paint ratios where we're 60% thinner to 40% paint. Okay. So I've got my mix in here, so I've lightened this up. So again, it's about 50-50 um, German gray and the light or dark ghost gray. And again, in the lacquer range, that German gray is the LP27. The uh, dark ghost gray is the LP36. And the reason why I like this is because it's got just a bit of blue in there, just a hint. So, I, And that's why I've got these other paints out, because I was thinking maybe if I wasn't happy with the mix, I might use the racing white, which is kind of a, a, a kind of an ivory color. Great again, great for doing interior of uh, of German vehicles, um, which is their LP29, and then maybe mixing a little bit of their pure blue. But pretty happy with just mixing these in, and it's a little bit easier, right? So easier to get the ratios down. So I've done this one panel here. So I'll start attacking the other panels. Again, this stuff sprays just beautifully. So this is where things start to speed up. Because your just kind of trying to get a little bit of color. We've already got a good base to work with, so you're just kind of enhancing what's already there. If you can see already, there's a. I'll get that sponge out of the way. You can see already there's a kind of a noticeable difference, which is good. And, it, and again, it looks a little bit cartoony at this stage, but don't forget, um, it's not going to stay like that. And it'll get even, you know, as we get into the, you know, the second highlight color, it's going to get even more cartoony. Um, but that's a good thing. That's what we want, because when we start putting filters and washes and all the weathering, it's going to knock everything back. And again, you know, you can always knock things back. Uh, you can always reduce this effect. You can always kind of dull things down or darken things down, but you can't make it, you can't make it pop again. So you always got to start from a place where it almost looks too garish. I'm just going to kind of just miss some, just to kind of harmonize just a little bit. Same thing, just missed. And again, this is the, you know, as you get to the lighter colors, it gets easier and easier to do. So you can see the difference, certainly when the panels uh, and the rest of the vehicle and in, in kind of the, the broader areas in the rest of the vehicle. So it's already modulated in one step. So let's start, again, working our way up in the same. And I haven't bothered putting sponges in here because the, you know, the... The amount of spray, overspray we're going to get is certainly going to be reduced. So just to, you're kind of just feathering it on. see the difference between this back half and the front half so now we're really starting to move at a good clip Now these uh, these lacquer paints. I don't know that I'd use these if I was uh, if I was using the, uh, the hairspray technique. Um, 
because the, I mean, these paints are, I mean, one of the advantages of these paints, aside from the way they spray, is that they're very durable. Uh, and as such, um, I don't know how well they would work for hairspraying. So if you're spraying this on top of hairspray to, to try and get a chipping effect, um, I think removing this may be a lot harder. So like for example, on this vehicle, uh, there's kind of the white borders on the mud guards, front and rear mud guards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to mask them off and then I'm going to hairspray them and then I'm going to spray them in white. Um, but I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the, to me, acrylic white. Um, I'm not going to, and I'm just going to thin it with water. I'm not going to thin it with uh, anything harsh. So, um, so I just, uh, again, just a footnote for everybody. Jumping, again, just jumping around the vehicle. But, yeah, that, just kind of looking at it, it looks pretty nice. So again, there's still one more color to go on. A highlight color, but let's, we'll carry on kind of doing the rest of this. Oh, and I did want to show you. So, I, I talked about not having to mask your road wheels, and masking road wheels is probably one of the most tedious things you'll ever do as opposed to assembling tracks, individual link tracks. And, and I'll show you in the back. When I spray, I just hit the middle and just kind of work my way out. And that's it. So you can see like I haven't, you know, very minimal of any overspray on the rubber part. Um, but because you're, unless you're doing like a parade ground vehicle, um, I don't think there's really any need for you to have to. And let's do the front. Again, just kind of start in the middle and just work your way up. Easy. There you have it. And again, because of all the mud and dust and pigments and grease stains and grease spills and whatnot that you're going to put on this, that's all you have to do for the road wheels. Very easy. And then I'll probably touch that up with the, the, the second highlight color. Simple as that. Okay, so let's carry on. When I'm doing the kind of the vertical sides of the vehicle, the vertical panels, I just kind of do an up and down motion and again, it kind of gives a bit of a streaky effect. Again, it's just another depth thing that, you know, another layer that you have on your vehicle. Um, so something, something else to take advantage of. Yes. 
just a bit there. So that, I mean, the nice thing about this this rear deck, or not rear deck, but this kind of the rear of the upper hull, is that it's in a natural, it's in a naturally shadowy area anyway, so I wouldn't, you know, we don't have to spend too much time worrying about modulating that, you're not going to see it. But you can see, you can see how the rest of the vehicle is. Like, you can see the different, like, so we haven't done anything here. These parts have been modulated with the first highlight color. It looks pretty good. We'll just carry on with that. Same kind of streaking up and down on this side here, and kind of up and down motion. Same thing here. saturate the color so bring these front access panels here and then blend in around again the nice thing with spraying thin is that it gives you the ability to do this and you can build up the color very gradually Tops of the lights. And the top of the jack. Again, the jack we're going to give some attention to because you know that when when they were used, they would be under the vehicle. They'd be hoisting. They'd be in the mud and the muck and all that. So we're going to give this some special attention. So again, not too critical, just to get. All you have to do is just get some, just get some color on it. I think it's too precise. Top of the no tech light. Good for the upper surface. Maybe just a bit back here. Maybe some blending in here. This over and I will start paying attention to the back. Oh, I think I'm out of paint. Okay, so we're just going to refill on that second color, on that, on that first highlight. Okay, so we've reloaded the highlight color, so we're just going to continue building that up. Okay. 
Again, there's going to be a lot of mud and dust back here, so I'm not going to spend too much time. And then the same deal on the sides. I'm just going to kind of spray kind of very liberally up, up top. And I'm not going to spend too much time. I just got some color on the. There's going to be so much mud and dust here. You're not going to see any of this, anyways. So it allows us to save some time there. Do the side, the same type of thing, just here you're just kind of blasting color in the open areas. Okay. So good. So we have we still have some of our second highlight color in there. And what I'm gonna do is just add some of this lighter gray. Now this is the light ghost gray, so this is <clears throat> LP37. So we're just gonna add some of that to the mix. Thank you, Robert. And probably cut what we have. So you can see it's noticeably lighter than, and it's got that, you know, just a little bit of blue to it. And I like to work a little bit of blue into the Panzer gray bit of artistic license. So I'll just add, again, just picking up with the stir. I'm probably just adding, just cutting it, what's left 50-50 with this. So you can see how light that is. And then we're gonna top up our leveling. So you want this pretty thin. So this is probably 65% thinner, 70% thinner, 30% paint. And that's gonna give you more control. Button that up so we don't spill it. Button that up so we don't spill it. Okay. So now all we're going to do is we're just going to hit. There we go. So that spray is really nice. Wow. So we're just going to hit. Um, let's do one of these panels back here. Okay, you can see. Suddenly, how much how lighter that is compared to the rest. So I might want to do latches. And then when you're doing this part here, really you're just trying to catch raised areas that would catch the, the light, the sun. I might do some of these other panels, just touch them up. You can see the more, because the, the it's pretty thin, right? So you can build up, you can build up the intensity of the color very gradually. Start maybe at the top of the tool case. We'll start. This panel here. And you may want to do random panels. Okay? Maybe this big one here, just streak it back and forth. I'm just going to start hitting. So again, with this lighter color, I'm just going to maybe hit the top of the no-tech light. Right? Hit hit these 
latches. You know, hit that these panels a little bit. Maybe hit the top of this guard, the top of this armored guard, top of the gun. Right, maybe the center in here. Maybe that little access panel there. Top of these headlights here. So anywhere, anywhere that would just naturally get catch the sun, catch the light. Just you know, maybe the top part of that mud guard went in here. Top of that, you know, these little headlights and that I think I don't know if that's a horn or what that is. And again, because the paint's so thin, you can really spend time, really a lot of control building up the color. So maybe on the side here, just do the upper, the upper parts of the panel. Just the same up and down motion as if you're kind of streaking with the airbrush. Thing here. Again, you can see how it's lighter at the top here. And we'll do some of these other panels here. And again, this is, this is the stage where it really starts to look a little cartoonish. But because you're going to be applying filters and washes and other effects, uh, that's going to that's going to tone all this down and bring it together. Maybe just do, and again, this is just maybe the upper part of this panel here, the same type of thing. You're kind of streaking up and down. Same thing here, streaking up and down. You're trying to create artificial, you're trying to artificially create the, the lighting effect, right? And that's what this is all about. You can see how it's lighter at the top, darker at the bottom here. We'll do the same thing maybe for this panel. Just along that world scene. And then maybe the same thing here, just along the world scene at the top of it. Again, this is going to get, get covered up by a lot of mud and dust. And so I'm just feathering it, just kind of dancing along. I mean, I could put a post-it note here to get a clean edge, but... Yeah, I don't really need to. There you go. So I'm just going to carry on. I don't think there's much left to do. Maybe this side here. We're almost at the end of our time. But you can see how, you know, in the space of about an hour, maybe a little bit more, we've completely base coated, uh, applied the, the first highlight, and, and have modulated. Now we're on the second highlight. 
color modulator the vehicle. So, and you know, single color obviously, um, but you can see it's that easy to do. Uh, so I think I'll just carry on just doing just a few things. Again, just you're just picking out like here this this uh, this hatch here. I think that covers the starter. So that I'll give some attention to and kind of make that pop from everything else. And then the same type of thing here, where I'm just going to feather down, start at the top. I think this is I think this is the uh, what holds all the smoke grenades for smoke dispensers. Just along the top. You can see that there, so it's lighter on the top, darker on the bottom here. Very subtle effect. It's almost too subtle. I'm almost worried that in the subsequent um, filtering and washes and oil paint and whatnot, that that might get a little bit lost. So the effect looks pretty good the way it is right now. But same thing with these, I'm just going to highlight the, the upper part. But there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be a fair bit of mud on this vehicle, so... Let's highlight that beautiful Panzer Art fire extinguisher. I just really spent some time highlighting that. Maybe the holder for that shovel, a little holder for the axe. Maybe the upper part of this front. Same thing here. So you're just trying to create little areas of interest on the vehicle, kind of randomly. I go over there just very lightly. And there you have it. Let's do this one here. So I'm just going to pick up random panels to make it a little bit lighter. I like the patchwork effect that you get up here, right? It looks, really gives different areas of interest to the vehicle. So I think that's um, so I think that's it for for today. So I might uh, off camera I might make a few uh, and you know just carry on with uh, uh, with uh, some of the modulation, but I think it's materially there to be honest. I haven't done any on the side here. I might you know just kind of again the same type of thing, just blast in a little bit of that second highlight color on the upper parts, um, just to use the rest of the paint in the cup. Um, but materially done. So again, you can see within an hour, very easy to get a nice modulated effect uh, on on a on a single color vehicle. Um, I mean, this looks completely different from when we first started, when it was just uh, just black. They had the black primer on it. So, uh, so next time we'll uh, we'll focus on doing filters and, and washes, uh, and uh, and any changes I make between now and then, I'll definitely explain at the start of that session. So, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging in there with me, and uh, look forward to seeing everybody next time.